good evening one and all in today's session we are going to learn that how we can implement in a program the concept of structures using the c programming language now structures can be implemented in c as well as c++ and there are certain differences in the structures which can be implemented in these two languages so we are studying the c structures c style of structures so structure as i had mentioned in my previous lecture is used to store a collection of variables of different data type so structure is a user defined data type which consists of a collection of different variables of different data types they can also be of same data type but even if they are of different data type it is of no problem it will work so the intention is that the same data type is not compulsory okay it can be possible it may not be possible so this is used to group the data which is related to each other but it may be of different data type as we have seen employee details car details so the syntax of the structure syntax of structure you have to use a keyword you have to use the keyword s t r u c t struct then the name of your structure suppose i call it employee then open and close curly bracket you can mention a collection of variables in their declaration format means you need to declare the variables which are a part of your structure data type okay structure data type whichever variables come under that that you must declare now within this circular bracket or uh, curly bracket like you can have an integer variable say it is id of the employee then you can have a string of the name of the employee and since you are declaring it size you must specify suppose maximum the name can fit within 20 characters then you can have the salary of an employee which can be a floating point value okay you can have many others for now let us consider three variables so these three variables id name and salary are a part of the structure and the name of the structure is employee so under the employee struct type these variables are can be used and at this closing curly bracket this one you must write a semicolon okay this is the syntax for a structure so if we generalize this struct struct name or you can call it identity name or tag name okay anything you can call it then declare variable 1 then you can de declare variable 2 and so on you can go up to declaring variable n so all this time i'm saying i'm saying declaring the variables means that you cannot initialize your variable in a structure i repeat whenever you create a structure you can only declare the variables in it and outside the structure you can initialize those variables but inside here i cannot write int id equal to 9 okay i cannot write this this is giving me an error and after the declarations as as usual semicolon and don't forget this last semicolon over here so this is the syntax of structure have you understood this much yes okay yes yeah now we will see how to initialize these variables how to access the values how to print the values but before that let me tell you something about the memory so 
whenever you want to create a variable of the structure at that time you can say that that variable will be allocated the memory if you write your structure like this means what is this this is only the declaration of the structure i repeat this struct in whole as a whole it is a data type this whole thing which i have highlighted in blue is a data type you cannot say that only this first line indicates the struct data type no this whole thing is the data type and it is the declaration that means you can say that this is only defining what is included in your data type means what all uh, variables are there in your data type or what all operations you can perform based on which variables means what is the data that the structure can hold it can hold an integer id it can hold a string okay it can be the name of a person it can hold a floating point value means you are telling the program or you are writing it in your program that the structure employ can have this much variables or these type of values can be included in employ structure you have not yet created a variable whose type is structure right you have not created a variable whose type is structure so how to create the variable whose type is structure the syntax is you must write that struct keyword again again you have to write your struct name that is employ and then write the variable whose type is struct employ so suppose the variable name is e so here e is a variable whose data type is struct employ okay if i say e is the having a e is a variable whose data type is struct okay but there can be different structures which structure there can be an employ structure there can be a class structure or there can be a student structure there can be a bank detail structure which structure so since there can be multiple structures you must say that e is a variable whose data type is struct employ okay the data type itself is struct employ the data type is not structure only the data type is struct employ okay struct as well as struct name forms the data type this whole thing which i have highlighted in blue is the data type of e variable so let me write that as well data type of e is struct employ now whenever you create this variable e okay whenever you create this variable e the memory will be allocated for variable e means variable e can be located in your computer memory or machine memory or your cell phone memory or your device memory that means this variable e is now in existence you can access the variables of the structure employ using this e means using e you can access the id using e you can access the name using e you can access the salary so when you create a variable okay this is again declaration this is telling you what what your data type can do or how is your data type what values it can include this is your declaration part of your structure and later we will initialize the structure so this is the declaration part you can see and this is you can say structure information so now you have declared your structure and when you declare you have to create a variable of structure employee type and that time you can say that memory is allocated for your structure for e variable okay so what does this mean that you can have different variables whose type is structure for example i'll show you the difference between structure data type and your normal integer float and all those data types so your primitive data type or basic data type like int you used to write int a okay if you write only int it is a data type similarly if i write only struct employ if i write only struct employ it is nothing but data type you have not created a variable of that data type similarly if you write only int it is a data type it is not indicating that there is a variable of int data type so when i write int a it is similar to writing struct employ e 
okay if i write int a means a is a variable whose type is integer similarly here e is a variable whose data type is struct employee and later this is initialization part when i write equal to 5 that we will see later so this is basic data type or primitive data type declaration and this is a declaration of your user defined data type one more difference is here the uh, word int or the keyword int is a single word okay single word without any space in between but here to specify the structure type of data you must write two words one is the struct keyword and one is the name of that structure this both these words together must be written whenever you create a variable of the structure employee type so if i create a variable e whose type is struct employee i must write these two keywords struct space employee this indicates the data type of e variable so here one word you have to use for primitive data type basic data type but for user defined two words to specify the data type of the variable whose type is struct employee then whenever you write int the memory is not allocated why because there is no variable whose type is integer you have just simply written int but when i write int a a is a variable which will be allocated how much memory 4 bytes if int is occupying 4 bytes in memory suppose this is float i write float a then a will be will be allocated 4 bytes if i write char it is just a data type i write char a then a is present in memory and it occupies 1 byte now how memory will be allocated to e because e is a struct employee type and struct employee can have three values okay this data type can hold three values that is an id a name and a salary so how this memory will be allocated we will first see that how we can find that out So the structure is at the left hand side, and that will be allocated memory. Means I'll show it at the right hand side. So whenever you write struct employee, e will be stored in memory. And the value of e is an address. Okay, I repeat. value of e is an address okay keep this in mind value of e is an address suppose the address is 2000 then the value of e is 2000 and e acts as a pointer okay e acts as a pointer to a block of memory just a minute since in your memory you need to store three values that is id name and salary here id for that space is allocated name and salary so here i can have the integer id here i can have the string name okay name is a string over here and here i can have a floating point value salary so e is a pointer to a block of memory now your id since it is the first variable in your structure okay the order is important if first is id then is the name and then salary okay that is how it will be stored in memory so id may be at address 2000 okay and this 2000 is the value of e okay means the block of memory that i have shown here with three partitions that block starts at address 2000 and that 2000 is the value of your structure type variable since integer occupies 4 bytes then 2000 2001 2002 2003 2000, these four bytes are for id then 2004 is the starting address of string now string how many characters are there in the string 20 okay including the null character so total 20 characters so 2004 plus 
that is 2023 up till there the bytes will be allocated and 2024 2024 2025 26 and 27 okay so you can say that it starts at 2000 it goes up to 2003 for id then it starts at 2004 and goes up to 2000 It occupies a uh, twenty, right? So two thousand twenty-three, and here it uh, starts at two thousand twenty-four, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Ends at two thousand twenty-seven. And the next memory location will start at two thousand twenty-eight. Okay. See here. First, it will be two thousand. Okay, in this block, then this will be for two thousand. Then in this block, you have another location for two thousand one. Then two thousand two, and then third location is two thousand three. Okay, so this is how two thousand to two thousand three means the block for ID. Then two thousand four up to two thousand twenty three. These many blocks you will have in the second block, and then two thousand twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, and twenty seven. These locations comprise of this block. Okay, so E is the pointer which points to the block at which the values can be stored, and the value of E is the starting address of that block. That is two thousand. Have you understood how it will be stored in memory? Yes. Yes. Should I repeat? Okay, you have understood. Anyone wants me to repeat? Okay. So this is how memory will be allocated, and at what time or at which step of your program this will happen? It will happen when you create your structure variable struct employee. At this, whenever this line is executed. or whenever this line is compiled that time the memory allocation will happen now i have also explained to you that at which address a particular block will start okay and it will be stored consecutively consecutive why because we have seen that 2000 to 2003 then immediately after next is 2004 from there onwards one after the other the blocks are consumed okay then how we can access or read a particular structure accessing a structure means you want to read the data which can be accessed by a structure so here you have declared your structure variable you can initialize it and here to initialize it is a type of initializing is a type of uh, it follows a type of array syntax for example you must write now there are three variables in your structure okay your struct variable can access three values or three variables so you must write within your curly bracket Okay, within your curly bracket, you must mention three values. Like, suppose ID is twenty-three, name it is a string. So, suppose it is A B C, and salary twenty-four point one two. Okay, maybe this much salary, and then you can write the semicolon. This is the way you can initialize directly. Means on a single line, all the values you can initialize. Okay, uh, just a minute. Okay. So E is a struct employee type variable, and it can access three values, which is ID, first value, name, second value, and third value within your curly bracket is the salary. Now you cannot change this order. First ID only should be mentioned. After that only name, and after that only salary. 
you cannot first write the salary then the name and then the id this is not valid it will give you error because whatever you write first will get assigned to the variable which is declared first in your structure this is my first variable of my structure <coughs> this is second and this is third here also first second third order must be same now this is if you want to initialize on a single line okay it is not exactly like array syntax but it is similar to that if you want to initialize another structure you must write struct employ okay this part is same now suppose initially you had employ 1 e1 now you want to create the same record for employ 2 then you can write e2 within your curly brackets you can write the name uh, the id suppose 24 xyz is his name and salary okay in this way you can create multiple structure variables this is if you are using a single variable whose type is structure okay this is one variable whose type is struct employ this is the second variable whose type is struct employ similarly e3 e4 or a b c d whichever name you want you can give not compulsory you have to follow e1 e2 e3 only you can even write l or suddenly you can write z also no problem okay any variable name you can give you can even write like this details is a variable whose data type is struct employ okay it can be anything but usually we name our variables as per what type of data it holds right if it is holding the record of an employee then emp or e1 okay now if you want to create a structure which you want to initialize on different lines of your program so struct employ e3 semicolon now e3 i want to initialize separately each variable of e3 i want to initialize separately this is possible by the dot operator or the struct member operator example e3 dot you can see here the values of since is an integrated development environment it is suggesting me that either i want to access the id or i want to access the character or i want to access salary so if you click on any one it will automatically write id but uh, i won't do that because that is automating it is automating my program development here i can write e3 dot okay even if it doesn't appear these three options i should know that which value i want to access i can access id so e3 dot id equal to 12 suppose okay this is the way i can initialize on different lines then i can write e3 dot suppose now name now here you can change the order you can write e3 dot salary next okay no problem here because you can access id means whatever you write after this will be stored in id only will be stored as the value of id here salary equal to 25.234 this 25.234 is the value of salary corresponding to e3 struct variable okay it is not the salary of e2 struct variable no it is a salary of e3 struct variable why e3 because e3 dot salary similarly once the, i can write now next i can write e3 dot name equal to within your quotation okay whatever the name so here order in your curly bracket is compulsory but here the order can be anything because you are specifying that which variable okay you are writing that dot variable name so it will understand that which variable now e2 dot name if i do over here now this is also possible you can overwrite or reinitialize or update the name part of your struct variable e2 can the name related to e2 variable is xyz but i can change it afterwards using this syntax also that e2 dot name okay it is changeable it is mutable it can be updated have you understood is it clear yes yes, yes.
ओके वेरी गुड एंड दिस इज हाउ वी कैन एक्सेस इच वेरिएबल विद इन द स्ट्रक्चर हाउ वी कैन एक्सेस यूजिंग द डॉट ऑपरेटर और इट इज कॉल्ड मेंबरशिप ऑपरेटर or it is called struct member access operator so when i'm saying all these things you it is better that you take down notes okay because whatever you write in your own handwriting it will be better to understand i hope you all are already doing that now how we can create the structure in different scope now scope means either the structure you are uh, using it in your main function or maybe you are using it in the some user defined function this you can the programmer's choice it is the programmer's choice where he wants to use his structure for example i'll give you the rough outline where how i what i mean to say you have your hash include over here then you have void main and you will define the void main okay then suppose you have some user defined function okay suppose int check and you can define it outside your main right so i am defining it here suppose then if i can mention my structure over here after my hash include i can write here struct struct name suppose emp or let me write employ only employ then i can write which variables are included in my structure and semicolon so this is what it is a structure which is defined outside all the functions right it is not within main it is not within any user defined function it is defined outside all the functions okay the function may be main it may be some a uh, user defined function that is of not any importance you must you can define your structure outside all the functions so if anything is outside all the functions what is it called do you remember global yes very good excellent it is called global so here the structure employ is a global structure you can say okay it is called as global structure global structure now we can have a local structure local structure means the same thing is this whatever i have written as a global structure it can be present within some local function it may be main function or it may be user defined function now before that since this is a global structure you can create the structure variable over here struct employ e1 and here you can write e1 dot uh, name and then you can initialize it to something okay means this e1 you can create within any function because you can access this structure you can create a variable of this structure in any function because the uh, declaration part or the information part is global means it is common for all the functions it is common for all the functions so here i can access or create a variable of that same structure in my check function which is user defined function here also i can create struct employ e2 even if you create e1 no problem why because the e1 is a, a local to main okay here if i create e2 i can write e2 dot whatever so here what happens if you write this information part outside all functions you can access that data type okay you can access that data type within any function this is called global structure so let us write one small program based on this let me call it emp this time struct emp and i have two 
Okay, for a change, let us call struct test. I have two variables, a which I need to declare, and b also. Now, I have one check function which I'm calling over here. So I need to define it. So I can define it either here or below main also. If I choose to define it here, and it is returning void value. Here I define that, and here I am calling it. So, is the syntax of this information part of structure correct, or is there any error? Semicolon. Uh, very, very I guess good. there is a yes. Very good. Semicolon at the end. Now, suppose I create a struct type variable. Struct a test type variable, struct test type variable, so struct test, and the name suppose t one, and then here I write t one dot a equal to twelve suppose, but I don't uh, initialize t one dot b. Okay, it is fine. Means if you print T one dot b. Let us see if you print T one dot a. Let us see what happens. So now I have initialized or created a structure in main of struct test type. Here also I create a structure test. Of very of um, which has the variable t two and t two dot a equal to thirteen. And just for our information, let me write one printf statement. Struct test is being accessed from check. And here, let me give the message that struct test is being accessed from main. Now let me save this program. As global struct. As a C file. So as you can see, it was successful. Whatever we have coded, that is, it can be accessed from main. And it can be accessed from check function or user defined function as well. Is it clear? Yes. Other students. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we have created these variables. Now let us see how we can access. Means we have initialized it. Now we want to know what we have initialized it to. Means we can print the value. So instead of this below it, let me write printf. For understanding, let me write t two dot a equal to. Okay, this is a string. Means it will be displayed as t two dot a equal to percent d, and then the t two dot a. Okay, so how this will get executed? First, it will print struct test is being accessed from check, and then t two dot a is equal to thirteen because t two dot a I have initialized it as thirteen. So a a variable of t two a variable of t two structure that will get displayed here that value. Similarly, I can print the t two dot a of I can print the a value of T1 structure also. Okay, let us execute this. See here, from main, in main what I had, I had T1 structure. Okay, struct test T1 is in main. So T1 dot A is equal to 12, right? We have initialized it to 12. That is getting displayed, and 13 was in the check function. Okay, so we are getting T2 dot A value also properly. 
So this is how you can print the value. Now I have not initialized t two dot b. Okay, so let me print the value of t two dot b before initializing, and let's see what happens. Maybe it gives some garbage value. Let's see. I'm printing t two dot b. See here, t two dot b is giving some garbage value. It is like a normal integer variable or floating point variable. If you forget to initialize and you print its value, it gives some garbage value. Same thing is happening here. Now, if I change it, if I write t two dot b is equal to ten, and now if I run the program, it should give me ten, and it is giving me right. Now, what if I, since both are integer types, right? A and B both are integer variables. Let me write int a comma b. Okay, and now let's see if everything works fine. So as you can see, everything is working good. So what we understand that if the structure variables are of the same type, you can use such type of common declaration for both. Either write int a semicolon, int b semicolon, or you can write int a comma b. Okay, try this on your machine also. Now, this was the global structure, so we can access it everywhere. Suppose even in my main function, my structure is t two only. I name it as t two. Let's see what happens. It will work because just a minute. Let me change this also. See, t two dot a from main is twelve, right? And t two dot a from check is also the correct value. That is thirteen. That means let us relate. Let us relate this to our normal integer type. Suppose the uh, functionality or how the integer variable should work. It is defined in the C libraries. Okay, so in my library. int functionality is defined okay and in my program each user can write different programs there are so many users or programmers so in my program i am writing int a equal to 12 and this i am writing within my check function okay within my check function i am writing int a within my main function i am writing int a we know that though the integer the working of integer is has been defined if we create different variables of the same name in different functions a and a other variables they have the same name but they are different for the check function this a is local for the check function this a is local for the main function though the functionality of int is same we can create the same variables of same data type Having different meaning. Similarly, I have defined my functionality of the structure. I have defined the struct functionality. Okay, I have defined because it is user defined in my program. I can create a struct variable of type emp, and the name is a in my check function. Similarly, I can create the same structure variable name i can have the same name of the structure in my main function because this a is a struct emp variable local to check and this a is a struct emp variable local to main okay so though the information part or declaration part is common to all you can have the same name structure variables in different functions they have the different meaning but if you have struct s2 again in the check function only okay it will give you error because same variable name cannot be for more than one time in your same function okay this we know it even for integer it is the same have you understood this much is it clear yes yes okay yes yes yes, yes. now this was global structure and how we can access the values so this was global structure 
now we can also create global structure variable which are my structure variables t1 and t2 in this case i can have global t1 and global t2 also means i want to create my structure type variable and that variable should be global so what i can do i must write in this information part which is outside all the functions i must write here i can write t1 okay before the semicolon i can write means how i am writing closing curly bracket structure variable name semicolon okay means here t1 is a global structure variable so i can access this t1 from check function as well as main function for example here i don't need this statement now means for what i want to show you here i have t1 t1 dot a this t1 is this global t1 and here t1 dot b is this one let me make the changes and that same t1 i can access from my main also so here t1 dot a suppose i make it minus 12 then make the required changes so now let me print the values so it is working from main my t1 value is what minus 12 and from check function my t1 value is 13 and t1b is 10 now if i want to access t1 dot a from my um another function let me create another function say if you n here i want to here i want to print the value of t1 dot a now since t1 dot a is global i can access it from any function so t1 dot a is equal to t1 dot see here if and one more hint that if it is displaying set dialog or pop up means that the particular variable a or b is accessible from this function okay if it doesn't display then maybe there is some error in your ide so i am printing t1 dot a so let us see what happens now and i need to call this fun function also i can call it from main i can call it after check let me give one um, backslash n over here and let me write struct test is being accessed from fun function semicolon here also backslash so see t1 dot a is getting printed minus 12 t1 dot a is 13 and t1 dot b is 10 and from here it should print the value okay here it is not printing the value but it will it should print just try it on your machine okay it is correct whatever you have written so only it is getting executed it will print value of t1 dot a now if i write if i change the value t1 dot a equal to 22 in my fun function okay see whatever i have done is correct right you agree with me but it's not printing here maybe there's some error on my system or it's not accessing because i'm making so many changes in the same program so you try it on your machine okay it will definitely work this value t1 dot a can be accessed from fun function because it is being accessed from check function and fun function is also user defined like check function okay so it will definitely print no worries just try it on your machine similarly if i want to create two global variables t1 and t2 i can write t1 comma t2 yeah right cool okay here i can access t2 dot a and in my fun function also i can access t2 dot a
and when i run this i need to t2 dot a is been printed from check as 13 okay from fun t t Two dot a is not getting printed. You need to check it out. Uh, like we have to write a uh, percentage d in that print up statement. Oh, oh yes 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 percent d. Sorry sorry, I forgot the percent d only. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, but sometimes even it may not work because I'm making changes in the program. Like last times we have seen, so it will print. Okay, here percent D was missing. Uh, now, if I do not initialize T two dot A, okay, T two dot A has been initialized in check, but it has not been initialized in fun function. Now, if I print T two dot A, it is printing the this one from check value. Means what? We know that global variables are common to all the functions. So, if you make the change in any one function. That change will be reflected throughout your program for all the functions. So the most recent value of t2.a that will be accessed by fun function. Suppose in my main function, I have t2.a equal to minus 12, and I am printing t2.a. In my check function, I have made t2.a as 13. And in my fun function, I have not done anything. So first main is called, so t2.a is equal to minus 12. Then check function is called. So t2.a will become 13. And then in your fun function, I'm just accessing t2.a. So the most recent value of t2.a is from check. There it has been updated last. So 13 is the value that is getting printed. Right? t2.a was minus 12, then it became 13. So it is 13 finally. Similarly, if I make some change over here in my fun function, 21. And now if I do it, See, most recent value is 21 that is getting displayed. So we know how to create global structure. We know how to create global structure variable. Now how to make the global structure variable globally defined. Means I want to say that I have created T1 over here. And here outside, I can write T1 equal to, let us test this. If I can write T1 equal to, then 12 comma, or let me write, 80 comma 90 semicolon. So here I've globally defined T1. Let's see if it runs. So it is giving me an error. Let us see if I can do this way. Okay, these have to be removed. T2 comma. Just a minute. T I am writing T1 equal to Okay, I have two global structure variables T1 and T2 and I have defined T1 outside. Let's see. Okay, it's still giving you an error. That means it is not allowed to define it outside. But now suppose I write T1 and I don't initialize it over here. And I want to access T1 dot B. Okay, here also I don't have anything of T1. Now if I run it, still it gives error. Means what? Global definition is not possible of the structure variables. You can only locally define them. Okay, because structure variable, whenever you create, it is you can create multiple variables. So it is not allowed to create the definition globally, but you can declare them globally and you can access T1 and T2 in all the possible functions of your program. Have you understood? Is it clear? Yes. I have a Yes. Uh, how does it get to know that T1 is int type or uh, st uh, which data type it is? Because you have not uh, declared the data type of a T1 or T2, the global data over here? No, yes. whenever you write it after this uh, bracket, curly bracket, and before this semicolon, since it is attached in the de uh, declaration part to this structure, it knows that T1 and T2 are a part or they are the structure variables of the type struct test. 
A1 and T2 belong to struct test that is known. This type of declaration is possible. Even in your C++ for class oriented programming, such things are possible. Here, if you declare them, it is known to the compiler that it is of the type struct test. But if you do it in some other function like check or main, there you must, uh, if you want to create a variable of struct type, you must write struct test T1 or struct test T2. Okay. So if we have like uh, in the struct test the uh, structure, if we have like a variable also, a matlab, uh, string type also, and int type also, or float yeah. type also in that struct test, then t1, t2, how will that it get to know that it's of which type, data type? No, t1 and t2 can have all that, right? It can have uh, string, it can have uh, integer type. Means you are saying that if I have int a over here, then I have a string over here. So you're telling me that how T1 will have inter and how T2 will have string like that you're telling? Yes. No, means this test uh, structure, it can have the values of integer and character or string. Means that T1 also, from T1, you can access int and char or int and string. From T2 also, you can access this int and string. This int and this string will have a specific value for T2. And this int and this string can have a specific value for T1. Means what? You can have, see here, E1, it has its own set of values. Here, E2 has its own set of values. And using E1 dot, the variable name, you can access the that part of E1. If I write E1 dot ID, then it will print 23. If I write E1 dot name, it will print ABC. Means you can have the set of values for each structure variable, right? It is not that T1 will have string or T1 will have int only. It will have all these three values, right? Yes, got it. Yeah. Now, we have seen that global structure and all. Now, if I write globally T1, uh, T2 dot, a is equal to 78. And now let us try to access t2.a and t2.a. Still, it is giving me error. So if you define it using your curly bracket or if you define it individually, it is not allowed globally. OK, now what is the, what is the local structure? Local structure means you can write this information part within some function. Maybe you can write it within main. If you write it within your main, okay, this is how it will be written within main. And then you can create struct employee E1 or you can write E1 over here also. And then E1 dot name you can access. Okay, this is also possible. But this E1, you cannot access from check function because it, this structure is a local structure for main function. Okay, let us quickly do that. In my main, I will write the this part. Okay, so struct is a structure defined, or you have written that how it will work within your main function. So now t two dot a is equal to minus twelve. This t two dot a, you cannot access t two dot a from here. So it should give me an error. See, it is giving me that I cannot access the structure variable T2 because it is a structure which is local to main. Means this structure exists only within main. You cannot write T2 dot over here in check and fun. So if I write here struct test T2 and then T2 dot A is equal to minus 12, I can access it over here. Let me <coughs> remove this part over here. So in my check and fun, I cannot access t2.a. I can access t2.a only from this main function where it has been written this way. So when I run this, it is run, OK? It is not being accessed, OK? I'm just printing that statement and t2.a is equal to minus 12. 
if i try to access t2.b or a over here it will give me error so you can access the structure only from where it has been written from the beginning here you have declared it or written the information part and that you can access only from main function since it is written over inside the main function so have you understood all about this structures the basics yes yes others yes mm, yes okay so now you can start putting your attendance in the chat box and i had given you that coding challenge to complete so many have submitted and i have to still evaluate them and the one who has performed the best in that they will be certified with this just a minute they will be certified or it will be recognized by this batch skilled programmer batch okay so your name and the challenge name will come here and it will be issued to you so who, whoever collects maximum of these batch cards or these sort of certificate they will get some benefit for the final assessment or in this course any doubts if you put your attendance you can leave this meeting thank you thank you welcome thank you welcome welcome what out yes uh, that structure table which you declared for structure for during the declaration part the initial part of the program we uh, can i use that test part again and again like for different uh, values means in your function you want to update the value of the variables of that star yes i mean to say that if if suppose i have struct test and then i have the values like name Ah, yes yeah you can do that no because yeah here you can have t2 dot initialize to 13 and later on you can make it 21 so this 21 value is the value of t2 dot a which is for fun function it can have different value in check function it is possible like can you just scroll down okay now this was local so it cannot be accessed from check and fun but previously just a minute uh it's uh -huh. yeah ha uh, this struct test here uh. you have uh, t initialize a okay, then char string so can uh. use again like struct test and then again int and then some other variables means you want to write this whole thing again again with different variables different like, variables yeah. okay yeah and then so let me try that so you are creating another struct test with um maybe float a and let us keep one value same that is char string 1 character type but string 1 23 suppose and then uh, this test has t1 okay most probably it will not work because test is appearing two times in the same program see it is giving error for the second time whenever you have used test so test whatever structure you create this part should be unique it should be written only once you can create structure test 1 you can create structure test 2 but same test you cannot redefine it like this okay 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 yeah. got it yeah Uh, can there be a change in timing? Uh, what time would you prefer? Seven. Seven. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I have also thought. Yes. Like in uh, Java, we have like front end and back end. Like if I suppose want to store some values, like uh, suppose there is a name. a uh, name equal to a class and i have to store the values of all the students name so i in java we write the name of the student and the data get automatically automatically to my database 
Okay. Yes. Is there anything in C C language also? Uh, you can connect your database to C language, and uh, as you said, that you can do in C language. But since C does not have all those object-oriented features and all, so it may be a tedious task, or certain uh, certain variables you can you will not be able to store in your database. So it is limited. Means you cannot do all that you do in object-oriented programming languages like Java or C plus plus. You cannot do all of that in C. Okay, it may be possible, but it will not be efficient. Or you may have to use certain. You may have to embed the C language in some other language and then use it. But directly through C, it is not possible. Then how is it? I mean, how is it applicable in real life? I can't do anything with this. Means you can definitely connect your database. Means you can access the values from your database. But all the higher level operations, like uh, like how you can do in Java, those other operations. those will not be possible means how you can use c you can use it for uh, where you, means even in your c libraries you can include them right so that particular function of including something externally that is possible but directly database management and all that all high level features cannot be possible in c language means you can include other features but uh, such operations to and fro you cannot perform okay 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 thank so you so where you can use c language like if you are creating a project in which you are uh, you can create your user defined header files also like hash include stdio.h you can create hash include database in that database you can define different functions and those functions you can directly use in your main program such things are possible so such cases you can use c language yes okay got it yeah yeah thanks yeah welcome